Hello everyone. We have a nice um, rounding practice today, connecting us with the elements of nature, um, kind of coming out of this time of very um, oppressive heat. Um, and so that kind of creates a lot of stress in the body. So we'll take it easy today. We'll um, give ourselves plenty of time to start warm up and lots of time cooling down and um, relaxing into our practice. So once you get started um, in a comfortable seat, if you have a blanket or a bolster, you can have um, that under your hips. So your hips are just slightly elevated above the knees. And just allow the eyes to drift shut. Notice any resistance or fluttering behind the eyelids. And see if you can soften into that. Today that presents more of a challenge. You're also always welcome to take just a soft gaze out at the horizon. And just start to arrive here on your mat. Letting the dust from the busy day just start to fall away. Landing outside the corners of your mat allowing yourself to be present here for the next 45 minutes. And as always, let's just turn our gaze inward and take a brief scan of our physical body. Just starting at the top of the head, bringing that gaze down, scanning through, just checking in to see how you're feeling and what you notice. All the way down through the midsection, the arms and the legs. Begin to turn the attention to the breath. Just noticing the quality. Noticing the way the breath feels in the body. You can begin to deepen and lengthen each inhale and allowing it to match with the release of the exhale. Continue to cultivate our Dirga breath, our three-part breath. Allowing the belly, ribs, and chest to fill in the inhale. Releasing chest, ribs, and belly on the exhale. Stay with that three-part yoga breath for a few cycles on your own. I'll cue you when it's time to stop. the mind begins to wander, just come back to the breath as your single point of focus. And slowly releasing that focus on the breath 
allowing the mind to release and do whatever it is it would like to do for a few moments. eyes still closed, just take a moment and notice how you feel. Just take a moment with the eyes still closed just to change the cross of your legs. So just bring the opposite shin in front. Then draw the hands to heart center, pressing the thumbs against the breastbone, yet leaving a little space between the palms, almost as if you were holding a seed in there, seed between your hands. That seed can be whatever you would like it to be, your intention, sending the energy of your practice to someone who needs it today, for yourself, or for the whole universe. Just take a moment to focus on what that is for you in your heart. And allow yourself to come back here throughout the practice. Allow the hands to drift up and pressing the thumbs against the third eye point between the eyebrows. And on the next exhale, allowing the hands to drift down by the sides. And as you're ready, allowing the eyes to open and take in the light, the space around you, the feeling of the floor beneath your hips. And you can keep, if you have a blanket or a pillow under the hips, you can keep it here. And then just inhale, sweeping the arms up overhead, allowing the palms to touch really finding length through the side body here. And as you lift up, also note that you're grounding down through the sitting bones. And exhale, drawing the hands back through heart center. Inhale, sweeping the arms up overhead. Again, palms touch, finding length through the side body, finding length through the spine, getting light yet feeling grounded. And exhaling hands back through heart center. One more time, inhale, sweeping the arms up overhead. Palms touch. And exhale hands through heart center. And allow the hands to just rest on the legs and we're going to just start to twist from the midsection here so you can take the right hand and place it behind you on the floor or mat tenting through those fingertips and then you'll use the left hand on the right thigh to help find some twisting motion as you start to twist from the midsection towards the right the head will be the last to turn and your gaze can be all the way back over the right shoulder um, or it can be down towards the ground towards the fingertips you can explore here and do what feels right for you and notice that you're not lifting uh, the left hip bone up into your twist you're rooting down through both sit bones equally and with each exhale can you release into the twist a little bit Noticing the length through the spine, not hunching over here, but we're also not really arching our backs, just nice and long. And then slowly releasing, bring the 
hands back through center. And then start two from the midsection, twist towards the left. The right hand can be on the left thigh. That left hand tenting up on the fingertips behind you. And rooting down through both sits bones, finding that twisting motion. And the head is the last to go. And that gaze might be in a different place on this side. That's fine. Be down at the floor or all the way back behind the left shoulder. Deep exhale, twisting a little bit deeper. And length through the spine. One more round of breath here. And then coming back through center. So we're gonna change the cross of the legs again. Um, but this time, you wanna make sure that you have the um, legs kind of stacked in front of each other. So we're gonna begin to fold forward over the legs. So allowing the fingertips to rest by the sides, sitting up again nice and tall, leaning down through those sit bones. And then begin to hinge forward at the hips, nice and slow. We're finding a length through the spine here. And you can have those hands start to walk forward, like little suction cups. <laughs> finding length through the spine. And when you find your edge here, this sensation through the uh, glutes and the back of the legs, you can release your head down, reaching towards the earth. Nice cleansing breaths. Softening into the stretch. Crown can be heavy. And slowly beginning to press into the fingertips and walk the hands in back towards the legs. And then we'll change the cross of the legs again. You know where we're going this time, so if you had to readjust uh, the placement of your legs, you know what to do this time. So again, shins are in front of each other, not on top of each other. And pressing down into the fingertips, finding that length through the spine, rooting down through the six bones. And then beginning to walk the hands forward, hinging forward at the hips. Real slow at first, mindfully that the sitting bones are really rooting back down towards the earth. Using your little tree frog <laughs> fingertips here, it might be a hint to what comes later, frog. <laughs> And then as you find your edge, releasing down into the fold. <sighs> Cleansing breath, softening into the stretch. Feeling whatever it is you feel, modifying as you need to modify. Finding the sensation that your body is looking for. And then again, walking those fingertips back in towards the body. Here, you can just extend the legs out long. The hands plant, just give the legs a shake. Shake it out. <laughs> and then we'll um, remove anything that we're sitting on. And we'll just make our way to our tabletop position. As you arrive in table, just check in that you are have your uh, legs are about hip width distance apart. And we'll start to move through some cat cow here. So on your inhale, belly drops, gazing up towards the ceiling, shining through the chest. 
As you exhale, pressing the earth away, belly button draws in towards spine, finding our cat back, chin tucks. Inhale, belly drops, finding cow. Exhale, pressing the earth away, finding cat. Keep moving with your own breath here. You close the eyes. Just move through a few rounds of cat cow at your own pace. As always, you're welcome to add any additional movements. You hold cat or cow a little longer. Just listen to your body and find that intuitive movement. Three more rounds here on your own. meet in table, bringing the big toes together, spread the knees open wide, begin to press the hips back, finding our first child's pose. Forehead comes to the earth, heart space descends down towards the mat. See if you can begin to cultivate your ujjayi breath, your ocean sounding breath here. A child's pose is, as always, a place of rest. You can come back here at any time during the practice. You could spend the entire class in child's pose if you would like, <laughs> and still enjoy some wonderful benefits of practice. Two more rounds of breath here. Just see where you can soften, where you can let go, you can free your mind. Come back to your intention, to your seed. And begin to walk the hands back in and find our tabletop position again. I'm going to tuck our toes under, engage the core already, and then just hover the knees up off the mat. Tail tucks just a little bit. Nice and strong here. Really puffing through across the upper back. Maybe find a little bounce. Waking the quads up, waking the core up. You can let the knees come down and the toes untuck. Just take a round of breath here. And tuck the toes again. Hover the knees. And from here, we'll start to make our way to downward facing dog. So straightening into the legs any amount. Sending the hips up high. You can readjust your stance here. Feet are about hip width distance apart. You can rotate the palms out a little bit to find the internal rotation of the upper arms towards the ears. Tucking the tail, well it's not tucking, really sending the tail up towards the ceiling. Let's come up on the tiptoes, find a little bit of a cat back here. And then exhale, heels sink down towards the earth. One more time, up on the tiptoes. Finding your cat-like back. And then exhale, heels sink. Gaze is back between the feet. Open the mouth, close the mouth. Shake the head, oh yes, 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 no, no, no. If you haven't already walked your dog out, I'll invite you to do that, just bending from one knee and the end to the other. Mm. 
Arriving here in your downward facing dog. And then as you're ready, coming to stillness. Take a moment here. Really be conscious of the fact that you're not really dumping your weight into the floor here. So really pressing down, but lifting the front body away from the earth. Running light through the spine. And that generous or uh, no bending your knee is up to you. And then we're going to start to glide forward here. So finding a cat back, coming into our high plank position. Nice and strong. So gaze is slightly forward, head's not down. One long line of energy from the crown of the head to the heels. Tucking the tail under, zipping up the core. Nice and strong here. You know the first plank will always hold <laughs> for a little bit longer. So see if you can stay with me. If you can't, you can always bring the knees down to modify. Two more rounds of breath. Don't forget to breathe and plank. And finally, in your next out breath, send the hips back, downward facing dog. And then bending into the knees, gaze forward to the top of the mat. And then step or hop to the top of the mat, bringing the feet to meet the fingertips. And then exhale to find your forward fold. So in our forward fold, we have a nice generous bend in our knees here to start. Tail is reaching up towards the ceiling. The upper body is spilling over the lower body like a waterfall. Allow the head to be heavy down towards the earth. And here you can take ragdoll arms if that is in your practice. You can tuck the hands behind the calves. You can interlace the fingers and keep them at the base of the skull to help find a deeper opening. Whatever feels right to you. You can experiment with all three. Our practice is always an inquiry. What feels good, what doesn't, what challenges you. Maybe today you don't want to be challenged, <laughs> that's okay. And with each exhale, really sign out whatever doesn't serve you. I'm going to inhale to half lift. So fingertips can come to the shins, finding that L shape in the spine, extending through the spine and the crown. And exhale to fold. And inhale to halfway lift, finding that L shape length in the spine. And exhale to fold. One more time, inhale, half lift, exhale, to fold. So we're rooting down into the feet. We're gonna rise up into our chair pose. Who doesn't love chair? So we're gonna rise up, sweeping the arms up, tucking the tail under, sitting back in your imaginary chair here. Now, Arms can be directly out in front of you if that is where you're at today, or you can extend the arms up closer to the ears. But if that causes you to like hunch or bring the shoulders um, up by the ears, just keep them straight out in front of you. You sink a little bit lower into the chair, tucking that tail under, really strong through the legs here. You notice that we are about hip width distance apart. So we're using the strength of our legs and we're not pressing our legs into each other. The foundation of support is in our strength. Two more rounds of breath. Who doesn't love holding chair? Yay. <laughs> and then exhale, finally to fold. <laughs> 
inhale to half lift one more time. Length through the spine. Exhale to fold. Gentle bend in the knees, root to rise, sweep the arms up overhead, palms touch, hands come through heart center, and we'll release by the sides. Finding our Tadasana, our mountain pose. We'll roll the shoulders up, back, and down, inviting the palms to open and face forward. Take a moment to close your eyes. Arrive in your mountain pose. Just notice all the micro movements happening in your body. Notice where your center of gravity is. You're welcome to kind of glide forward and glide back and just notice what's happening as you do that. And releasing your mountain pose, just step the feet closer together here, sweeping the arms up overhead, palms touch, and exhale, hands through heart center. Keeping the hands at heart center here, and a step back with the right foot. So we're coming into a crescent lunge here. So you want the feet on uh, train tracks, not on a balance beam. And then inhale, sweeping the arms up and find your crescent lunge. Can you find a little bit of a back bend? Maybe you can gaze up towards the ceiling, real strong through that back leg. And can you bend into the front knee a little bit more? When you're exhaling, begin to cactus the arms down. Notice that changes your balance. Can you find your stability here? And then arms reach back up on the inhale and exhale to cactus. Inhale to extend. Exhale to cactus. Inhale to extend. We're going to cartwheel the hands down, frame that front foot. Step back, high plank. And again, nice and strong, crown through the heels, zipping up the core, puffing across the upper back. We won't steer, stay here quite as long this time. Two more rounds of breath. Stay with me if you can. And exhale, sending the hips back to downward facing dog. And bending into the knees, gaze forward, step or hop, top of the mat. Exhale to fold. Inhale, root to rise, sweeping the arms up. Exhale through heart center, pausing here. And stepping back with the left foot, find your foundation for crescent lunge. Inhale, arms up. Can you sink a little bit lower into the lunge? And exhale to cactus the arms. Inhale to extend. Exhale to cactus, maybe gazing up. Inhale to extend. Two more, exhale to cactus, inhale to extend, exhale to cactus, inhale to extend. Cartwheeling the hands down, frame the front foot, step back, high plank. Just a couple of rounds of breath here, nice strong core, and sending the hips back, downward facing dog. Bend into the knees, gaze forward, step or hop to the top of the mat. Exhale to fold. Inhale to extend and half lift. Exhale to fold. And bending into the knees, inhale, rise up, chair pose. Really strong here. Notice what's happening in the legs. Sure the knees are not caving in. 
And you sit a little bit lower, really reaching out through the arms, tucking that tail under. And exhale to fold. Inhale, root to rise, arms sweep up, arms touch, and exhale through heart center. And step the feet closer together here. I'm going to move into some balancing. So you can have the hands on the hips to start. We're going to move into our eagle pose. So if you use blocks and you like to have a block for your eagle pose, you can have um, a block next to your left ankle. So I'm going to proceed without a block. <laughs> so get really light in the right foot, really grounding down into the left leg. Left foot's really connected with the earth. Right foot's getting light. I'm going to let that right leg float up a bit. Bring it to about hip height. I'm going to start to bend into the left leg. Get your, your balance here. I'm going to cross the right leg over the left and start to sit back into kind of our imaginary chair but finding our eagle legs. So if you have a block or your toe, big toe is on the mat, it's just the kind of toe to help you find the balance. Legs are really nicely, tightly wrapped. If you have the full expression, the foot is wrapped around the back of the shin, on the back of the leg. And from here, inhaling the arms out to the side. Now, if this is too much for you, you can keep the hands on the hips. And then we're going to, on the exhale, wrap left arm under right and find our eagle arms. Hugging everything into the midline here. And you sink a little bit lower. You lift those elbows up so they're in line with the shoulders. Core is really strong. Keeping the arms where they are, we're going to start to straighten into the left leg. Right knee will lift. We're going to float so it's about hip height in front of the body. We're going to start to hinge forward and extend the right leg back, long in space, coming into our warrior three pose with eagle arms. And make sure those hips are closed off, facing down to the mat. And then, woo, slowly rising back up. Knees about hip height. And exhale it back down to earth. Allow the arms to unwind. Give it a shake out before we move to the other side. Okay. So again, start with the hands on the hips. This time grounding down into the right foot. Letting the left foot become light. Get your dristy and let that left knee come to about hip height. Find your balance here. You need to bend into the right leg. I'm going to cross the left leg over the right, finding our eagle legs. And sitting back to our imaginary chair, find the arms to inhale out to the side. And then sweeping right arm under left, finding our eagle arms. Then hugging everything into the midline here. And you bring those arms to about shoulder height. Ooh, if you lose your balance, that's okay. You just found an edge. One of the things I find so fascinating about our eagle pose, the eagle is such a, an enormous, magnificent bird. And it has this and just such a broad wingspan. In this pose, it's all about being like tight and wrapped in. And for me, it's a metaphor for we are not our physical body. We can take up as much space in this world as we need to, or as little as we need to. We're so much bigger than our physical body. Okay. 
So now I'm going to straighten into the right leg, releasing the left knee up towards hip height, and then beginning to hinge forward and extend that left leg back behind us, toes dialed down towards the mat, finding our warrior three. And when you've had enough, whew, <laughs> see if you can hinge your way, reverse hinge way back up, and allow the foot to come back, release the arms, shake them out, ah, and step wide on the mat, and just start to find some twisting empty coat sleeves here, a gentle bend in the knees. And come up on the opposite toe with the arm start to really swing. Just let it all go. Move with your breath. You can even start to bring in a harbor breath. Just a strong exhale on the twist if that works for you and your practice. And then starting to slow it down. No need to stop abruptly. Just find stillness again. For a moment, let's just step wide on the mat lengthwise. So you want the toes to be parallel, the feet to be parallel with each other. You inhale the arms out to the sides. In theory, you're about ankle to wrist alignment. So if you need to step wider, you can do that. And bringing the hands to the hips. From here, just nice inhale, nice and tall. And then to hinge forward at the hip joints, nice and slow. We're gonna pause at about halfway. So we have that L shape in our spine like we do when we're doing our half flip. And then on the out breath, you can release down into a forward fold or wide leg forward fold. You need to readjust your feet. You can do that. Allow the hands to come to the mat, the head crown to be heavy. And bring the hands back if you need more opening. Where can you soften into this wide leg forward fold? Inhale up on the fingertips, find that L shape. And exhale to fold. Start to bend from one knee into the other. Just find some skandasana, side lunges here. Staying low to the earth. Just find that opening through each side, the back of each leg and thighs. moving with your breath. If you want a little bit more of a challenge here, you can have the arms float. So just do what feels right. Take a couple of breath cycles to make it your own. And then coming back through center, inhale up on the fingertips, coming to that extended L shape in the spine, hands come to hips, then reverse hinge back up, standing. Now you can just walk the feet in or if you want to hop them in, that's fun too. <laughs> and find our Tadasana facing top of the mat. Inhale, sweeping the arms up overhead. Exhale, hands through heart center. Inhale, sweeping the arms up. Palms touch, finding length through the side body. Exhale, hinge forward, fold. Inhale, half extend, half lift to extend. Exhale, to fold. Plant the palms, step back. High plank one more time. Bring the knees down. Big toes come together, 
can send the knees wide and send the hips back to a child's pose. Take a couple of breath cycles here. Allow everything to slow down. Reconnecting with your breath. And then making your way back up to table. From here, we're going to take the right knee, you're going to lift it up and cross it over the left. Might need to readjust where you are, but it's kind of like you're sitting down and crossing your legs in a chair. Now we're going to start to send the hips back. So you walk the hands close to the body until the hips come to land on the earth. And again, you'll probably have to readjust here as we move into our bone across in the legs. But you want the knees stacked on top of each other. I will turn to face you so you can see that. So you want to just readjust and you want both of your sits bones to be on the earth here. You have the ankles be soft um, and grab a hold of the big toes here and then inhale up nice and tall. Noticing the length through the spine but the connection of the sits bones to the earth. And again, we're going to start to hinge forward at the hips here. Notice where your edge is. Everyone's is going to be different. So you don't want the hips coming up off the mat. It should be still grounding into the mat. And find where your edge is. From here, you could. this might be where you are. It might be enough sensation uh, in the hips and um, the legs to say, this is where I'm at. <laughs> And if you need a little more, you can just release down to fold over the legs. And if you need even more, you can walk the hands out in front of you. I might come down, my knees touching my nose on this side. Feels great for me, might not happen for you. That's totally fine. Allowing the breath to settle. Just feel whatever sensations you're feeling. Soften into them. Notice if you're resisting. And slowly Pressing your way back up. And then from here, um, it's not really an easy way to do this, but we're going to, you can reach back behind you and just press yourself back up so you're coming into the tabletop position with your um, knees crossed. And then uncrossing the right leg and then lifting and crossing the left leg. And walking the hands back until the hips find the mat, readjust the legs as needed, and those knees are stacking over each other. And find the big toes, inhale up nice and tall. And then as you exhale, begin to hinge forward over the legs until you find your edge and then release down to fold over the legs. Probably feels different on the side. That's okay. Just feel what you feel on this side. And notice again, if that um, left hip is completely come up off the mat, can you make sure that it reconnects down? Use your hands here to help send the hips back. Like those suction cups coming back in. Speaking of, I think I might have alluded to us getting into our frog pose, but we're running out of time. So you escaped frog today. 
Just soften into this stretch. Or boom across in the our cow face pose. Walking the hands back in. So from here, we'll make you push your way back up. You can just uncross the legs. Uh, have the hands come to rest on the mat behind the hips. Just shake the legs out. You can find some windshield wiper legs here. Just release. And as you're ready, we'll make our way down to come to lie on our backs. So I'm going to keep the knees bent. Bring the soles of the feet together and let the knees open wide, coming to find our Sukta Baddha Konasana. If this, um, this is a really nice counter stretch to um, our Eagle and our Gomukhasana, but if it feels like too much for you, always you can make little fists to support under your legs just to give a little extra support. Just close the eyes. Allow the breath to settle. Just let the earth do the work for you in this pose. Just allow gravity and the weight of your own flesh to assist in the opening here. You're actually, in fact, welcome to stay here for Shavasana if you would like. If not, place your hands on the outside of your thighs, drawing the knees in close together. Extend the right leg long, then the left leg long. Allow the palms to face up towards the sky. Allow the feet to splay open wide. Letting any tension in the body release. Moving the tongue from the root of the mouth. Let the earth completely support you. Shavasana. Welcome to stay in Shavasana for as long as you wish. When you're ready, you can come up to meet me in a seated position, with your hands at heart center, and your eyes closed. Taking a moment here to 
reflect on that seed is planted and growing in between your palms. Whatever that seed is to you, intention, wish, love and energy that you're sending to someone else, to yourself, or out to the universe. In your mind's eye, see that seed begin to glow. Beautiful iridescent light. Placing your left hand over your heart and your right hand over your left. Press that seed into your heart space. Allow the chin to bow. The light in me recognizes the beautiful seed of hope, light, and love in each and every one of you. Namaste. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.